watching Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. Today's show, we're talking cut candidates. Here's the reality. Right now, the Seahawks do not have the money to be able to sign their rookies. So with that, somebody's got to go. I got four players that the Seahawks could potentially move on from to save money to open up some cap space for their draft picks coming up next week. Here is what you need to know as far as the cap situation goes for Seattle. They have roughly $2 million in cap space right now. They are paying about $36 million in dead cap money. Oh. And every team needs roughly about $10 million to pay their draft picks. So in Seattle's case, roughly speaking, they need to free up about $8 million to be able to sign their incoming players in the draft next week. So, before we get to our potential cut candidates, want to make sure you are subscribed to Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports, for all the best draft news and rumors you need to know as we're talking about mock drafts. We did a fan-led mock draft this week. We're getting you all the news and analysis. We're going to be live for the NFL Draft next week as well. Lock us in. Never miss a moment. The latest happenings in your favorite team all offseason long, leading up to the draft before, during, and after. It's right here on Seattle Seahawks today. Join the family now. Subscribe for free. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. Let's begin with Daryl Taylor at the edge position. Daryl Taylor, he reworked his deal of sorts, but it's no secret that he's probably not going to play a significant role in this single hooks defense. And everybody knows that when you talk about Daryl Taylor, you're looking at a one-trick pony. Yes, he can get after the quarterback, but he struggles in run defense. He struggles in coverage. There's not a lot he can do. The Seahawks have tried turning him into a full-time starter before, and it simply didn't work. If you cut Daryl Taylor, you're looking at saving $3.116 million against the cap. That's a lot of money that you can be using for those said draft picks. Daryl Taylor, coming off a season where he had five and a half sacks, 28 tackles, seven tackles for loss. Daryl Taylor, if you move on from him, honestly, I think he is replaceable, whether it's with guys in the draft, because you're probably going to be looking for more edge rushers anyway, or whether it's production with guys you already have on the roster. I think the Seahawks can live without Daryl Taylor around. What do you guys think? Should the Seahawks cut Daryl Taylor? Why for yes? In for no way in the comment section. Let us know what you think. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works you choose two or more players in any given category, you get the choice of more or less, whether you are talking rebounds in basketball, home runs in baseball, goals in hockey. Prize Picks makes it easy. And we're looking ahead to the start of the NFL season on Prize Picks. I got our guy DK. Touchdowns and yardage all day. He rules with over 1,025.5 receiving yards. Also going with Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens to have more than 3,600.5 passing yards. Let's say we put $20 down in both those hit. We're making $100 on prize picks. Play along with me. PrizePicks.com slash sale at us. Promo code sale at us for a $100 deposit match on your first entry. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Download Price Picks today. You'll be glad you did. Let's talk John Radigan now. Radigan kind of has become irrelevant, if you will, with this Seahawks defense. There's not really a need or a role from John Radigan. I don't expect Radigan to make the 53-man roster to begin with. So you might as well just cut your losses now. And you're looking at saving close to $3 million if you cut John Radigan right now, folks. That is a significant amount of money for a guy that didn't do a whole lot for Seattle in 2023. Just 17 total tackles, no sacks, no tackles for loss. John Radigan, uh, I would be perfectly fine with moving on from. The Seahawks are totally regrouping that linebacker room, what they've done, bringing in Dodson and Baker. And I would expect the Seahawks to also invest in this position in the draft. So for me, I can move on. I can live with John Radigan uh, not being a part of this roster and saving that nearly $3 million there. 
The next name, this should be no real shock to anyone when we talk cut candidates. It feels like his name comes up almost every time. That is D. Eskridge. D. Eskridge, it has been uh, a disaster, to put it mildly, his time with the Seattle Seahawks. The one thing with D. Eskridge is that he hasn't cost a whole lot, right? This is somebody that um, has been on a rookie contract. The Seahawks aren't spending a ton of money on. But at this point in time, you need about every dollar you can save. As His cap savings are looking at about $1 million here, uh, 1.025 to be exact, of the money that you could potentially save if you move on from D. Eskridge. He didn't play a whole lot last year. He had the suspension as well. The one silver lining that when it comes to D. Eskridge that I would point to is that in this new kickoff system, the new kickoff rule that's come to the National Football League, there is a bigger emphasis on the kick return than there's been in quite some time. So D. Eskridge might have a potential role there, but I can't trust D. Eskridge. I honestly can't. This might be the time to say, you know what, count your losses and move on and save that $1 million as far as that goes. So what do you guys think? Should the Seahawks cut D. Eskridge? Type C for cut, K for keep. What do you think? Is it time to move on from D. Eskridge? Let us know in the comments section below. Last time on the list, this is going to be a bit of a shocker. Nick Harris, the Seahawks just signed him not too long ago at the center and fullback spot. One of the more fascinating signings for the Seahawks here is somebody that was supposed to be the Browns starting center a couple of years ago, had an injury, came back, they moved him to the fullback spot. Sounds like that the Seahawks are likely to put him at center as opposed to fullback here. But you look at what the Seahawks are looking at, they're probably going to draft at the interior of the offensive line anyway. Okay? So they can probably do better than Nick Harris. It sounds like that Ryan Grubb's offense isn't really going to be using a fullback a whole lot, if any at all. So if you're having second thoughts, if you're looking for extra cash, this just might be it. It sucks, the fact that he just got there, but it's $1.5 million we're looking at, potentially that they could be saving. So Nick Harris, I know it's not ideal. I know you just showed up here. But the Seahawks can do better than Nick Harris. And we've talked about some of the guys that they're looking at, uh, you know, in the draft. Eventually, there's not going to be enough room for everybody anyway. You're going to have to make some cuts. So, Nick Harris, uh, it's a tough business decision, but might need to save that $1.5 million on you. Who is a player the Seahawks should cut? What do you guys think? Who's the name that comes to mind? We've gone over several names already. Uh, from Daryl Taylor to John Radigan, D. Eskridge, Nick Harris, weigh in. Who's a player that you'd like to see the Seahawks cut? So we told you that we needed about $8 million to make these cuts happen in order for the Seahawks to be A-OK, right? To be able to sign their draft picks. Well, we did a good job of that. We saved $8.363 million dollars. So we've done enough to be able to sign our draft picks, okay? That's where we're at right now. Thanks for joining us here on this edition of Seahawks Today. More offseason, more draft coverage ahead. Subscribe now to the channel. Never miss a moment. We'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.